Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast hosted by me, Sloan. I don't think I've ever been so nervous for like an interviewee type thing in my whole life. Like as a creator, I can't imagine doing that to another creator publicly and stuff. Like living with these bitches for three fucking weeks. Oh, I was not prepared. Like, and I was always involved in everyone's shit. Did you get some backlash for doing that? So much. I literally got an email from the White House and I was like, did you just feel like your life was over in that moment? I feel like I was like drowning. Lost brand deals, lost hundreds of thousands of followers. So I told my manager, I was like, tell him to sue me. Let's get into it. You deserve to feel amazing this summer and it's time to get your mind and body right. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, and personally, my favorite part of Factor. Welcome back to the Let's Get Into It podcast, hosted by me, Sloan. And today we are joined by Manny Mua. Who Hi guys! I'm so excited to have. <laughs> How are you doing, Manny? I'm doing fantastic. I'm living the fantasy out here, you know, in uh, Los Angeles. I just moved recently, so it's been a journey, but it's nice to finally be like coasting yeah well now mm-hmm. you can put some charity work on your resume since Shut you've come onto this podcast <laughs> literally doing charity You're work so for stupid. us so manny mua the mua stands for makeup artist yes. and that's a big part of who you are and your brand mm-hmm. can you kind of explain like where did you get started with makeup and falling in love with it before we even get started on that let's talk about how we met how we met at yeah, High at Tops. The club. Yeah, at the club. <laughs> yeah. I was like, which is a, like, this is how this is even happening, you guys. Like, this is why this is happening. The sweetest angel comes oh. up to me and he's like, I know who you are. So we were at the at High Tops. Actually, mm. I didn't even know you were with Laura Lee because I've like seen Laura oh, Lee yeah. before, but like she just like is like a normal girl, you know, in public. Yes, you see her? Like she's short, a little. Yeah. Like I looked Cute. right past her and saw you and I was mm-hmm. like, I have to go say hi. I'm so glad you did because it was really, really cool. And you were so sweet and yeah. so kind. And I was like, I like you. I like your vibes. Oh, cool. I like your energy. And now you're here. So and now I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So makeup wise. Um, yeah. How did you like get started with it? Like how old were you? Were you like oh, yeah. one of those like three year olds that picked up a makeup brush? Or, oh, my like, God. No. Like, that was your me teens. at all. Like, I kind of wish it was like yeah. in a way. But remember I, like the, the, the love for makeup is when I would watch my mom like glam in the morning before she would go to work. And I was always very fascinated by it when I was super little. Mm -hmm. And then makeup kind of hit me because I was really into doing drag in the beginning. Like very When you say beginning, like high school, middle school? I'm talking like like early, like college. College, okay. So that beginning for me. Yeah. I didn't even come out until I was like late teens. Okay. Vibes. So um, makeup, like I would done drag a few times for Halloween with friends Mm -hmm. and like parties and stuff. And I was like, this is like really fun. But I didn't like the other aspects of doing drag. I didn't really want to like wear a wig. I didn't mm-hmm. really want to like wear a dress or heels or do all those. So I just like the makeup part. Yeah. So that's kind of the part that stuck with me. And I just kind of played along with it. And once like I find something that I really like, like I like dive in. Like, yeah. Hella. Like I'll obsessed. go into it and I'm like obsessed with it. Like I'll like practice it all the time. I took my mom's pigments from her room from Mac and would lock myself in my room and just like play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so did it was early, early twenties. Was she like, cool with that like did they ever have any like concerns any problems any like sit downs like hey well, they didn't know so you're like, just i was like, literally like living like a hannah montana life. did she definitely find like her makeup missing sometimes I would though, right back. yeah you know oh, no, you're, I was back. So you're stealthy. quick with it yeah. i am so stealthy you guys like i so i when i was like obviously getting into the makeup vibes like i wanted to work at sephora you know like mm-hmm. i was like i'll work at mac and sephora and be like a makeup girly mm-hmm. so i got hired at sephora with like no experience like Whatsoever. And you're talking about like college time, right? College Again? time. Okay. We're still in college. And like, I mean, at that point, like your parents probably know that still you're living gay, with right? My family. Yeah, but it's very like don't ask, don't tell okay. vibes. Like very, yeah. you know, times healing the wounds mm-hmm. that was, you know, that kind of thing. So I worked at a Sephora inside JCPenney. Mm-hmm. So my check came from JCPenney. Oh my God. So I was just like, oh, I work in shoes. Yeah. But I, little did they know, like I was literally like full glam jumping out my window. Like, were you doing makeup for on other people? Yes, but I had it on myself too. Really? Like, yeah. I was just like, yeah, I was like having fun with it. I was practicing on myself because I didn't have anyone to practice on because it was a secret for me. Like it was very like, mm-hmm. don't ask, don't tell energy. So I would jump out my window going to work yeah. and fully painted, come back. Like I had wi- makeup wipes in my car, wipe off all my makeup, walk to the front door. Like, yeah, I just finished yeah. working in shoes today. Shoot. So did yeah. they, was there ever a point like where you had that job specifically where they figured out what you actually did or did you kind of go through that whole like time period off the radar? They finally like started to, 
it started to click more when I started working on Mac. So okay. I left, I was at Sephora for a year, then I went to Mac, and then I remember, because I blocked all my family members from like my Manny MUA page. Mm -hmm. um, like I, like everyone from like church, everyone, like all my family members, I blocked everyone. So I was like, there's no way they're gonna find me. You know, because it was more of like a me thing. Like my Manny MUA page was like my other page. Yeah. Like it was like, it's me, it's my vibes, like it's my artistic outlet, that's all that. You know, that's what I wanted. So, my, I remember my parents, when they found out I had it, I think someone at church showed them. They were like, oh, is this no. your son? Because I was, like, gaining popularity on there, uh -huh. um, on Instagram, and, like, a little bit on YouTube, too. And they were like, huh, I think it is. So then, of course, when I get home and, like, they're home, they're like, what is this, like, page? Like, are you mm -hmm. are you transitioning? Are you trying to be a girl? Uh, that was the first impression because they didn't really know. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not transitioning. Like, I just... I enjoy the artistic outlet that makeup is for me. Mm -hmm. And they were so confused by it for so long. They were like, but you're going, like, you're going to try to go to med school. Like, what do you think that people are going to think when they find your Instagram mm. that's like glam? And I'm like, well, I don't really care. And I don't really yeah. want to go to med school anymore. And I started doing all this stuff. And they were like, so that was a big moment for you just to like kind of like open up to them about who you are, what you wanted, mm -hmm. those type of things. But they were like, you're going to delete your Instagram. Oh, okay. So and I was like, no, I'm not. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not going to delete it. And they're like, you're going to delete it. And uh -huh. I'm like, no. I'm At not. this point, you're like under their roof. Like, 100%. You know. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and I'm Mexican. It's, I feel like in, when you're living under the your parents' house, it's very like, you obey their rules. Yeah. Like, you know, Latino, like culture. It's very like, you're in my house energy. So I was like, okay, um, but I'm not deleting my page. And so I ended up not deleting it. And then, you know, just time had progressed and progressed and progressed. And I was growing on there. And then I would, like slowly but surely show them messages. I'm like, like look at like this email I just got from like this 11 year old boy who said that I inspired him, uh, yeah. you know? And so they yeah. were kind of like, oh wow, like there's more to it than uh -huh. they thought it was. Cause they, I think they were just freaked out. Like, especially think of it like 10 years ago, like gay hate crime was like at an all time high and mm -hmm. like things that you would see online, like on TV, like you wouldn't see like happy gay stories all the time. You would see a lot of like, all the gays have AIDS and yeah, they're all dying. and they're all getting beat and up. They're all getting yeah. Like that's yeah. like what it was for so long. So it was hard because I was like one of the first like beauty boys to like do yeah what I did at the time. So I was like, fuck, how can I like show an example? But I, I was like in a way the example. Yeah. Um, in a way. I have to say, do you know who Terry Joe is on um, I TikTok? When you said Terry that Joe. that person at church came up to your parents, I pictured Terry Joe coming up. Like, yeah. Is this your is, homosexual, is, homosexual like, son? Like I was like, oh my god, is Terry this your Joe homosexual? Is the one who is supposed to you know? I love uh, I want to have a podcast where she comes on, but the three different characters. So we start Absolutely. with like Terry, then we go to like Amethyst, and uh -huh. then we like end with Georgia. You know, I, like, that be iconic? I would love it. Like that would be so great. His like personalities switching between. Yeah. When he did the one Madonna, yeah. with the one with Madonna. Oh, yeah, I, love I it. screamed. It's not like, Madonna and a popper. Yeah. I was. She was like. I'm, I know. I was like I really. Screamed. I was scared for her. I was like, "Are you well?" <laughs> yeah. I don't think <laughs> yeah. so. I was like, "Is she gonna be okay?" <laughs> she looks great though. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Going back to like how, so you grew on social media and eventually in 2017, you had a big um, brand collaboration mm -hmm. with Maybelline. Yes. Like, did they like DM you? Like, how did it even like first start? And where were you right now at this point? Were you like, you know, out of college doing, working out as a makeup artist? Mm -hmm. Like, were you doing socials mm -hmm. full time? What was happening? Yeah, I was doing social full time at this mm -hmm. point. I stopped going to, like, I had already graduated and got my BS in yeah. health science. So it was more so like me going to the next level of like wanting to do med school because I already got my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I don't want to do that. I want to pursue social media full time because at this time, like, I had hundreds of thousands of subscribers, followers, and I was able to make enough money that I can, like, stop working my regular job. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember getting the email, it was an email like from my manager, like my manager, she was like, yo, like Maybelline wants to do, like you to be their first like male mm -hmm. brand ambassador. And I mean, this was like a huge thing because Maybelline's like worldwide. Yeah. And it was such a traditional brand for so long. Um, and so I remember getting the email and I was like, oh, that's cool, that sounds cool. But I didn't like think of the gravity of it at the mm -hmm. time. Cause I was just like, oh yeah, like another cool brand opportunity in my yeah. head. Like that's what I was thinking. Little did I know it was actually like a commercial. Like I didn't know we were like filming a commercial and it was like, like, no, you're, like, the face of the product yeah. for a while. So I was, like, holy fuck. I remember when I was doing the commercial itself. I, it was me and Makeup by Shayla. Uh -huh. And we were doing it. We were in the faces of the, mm -hmm. of the product. And it was, like, the most insane press hit Maybelline had ever had. Like, me being, like, the first male yeah. ambassador. Yeah. It was, like, I think to the to date, like, it was their biggest press hit they've ever wow. had. Um, when I was their 
their their um their model or like male ambassador and now looking back on it like having some experiences like one like were you paid right and then two do you were you treated right in that situation mm -hmm. because you were kind of thrown into something i guess a lot bigger than what you've been in totally before do you think like it was overall great experience i do i, I do think it was an overall great experience i was paid really really great for it mm -hmm. um the brand treated me so amazingly like i truly had such a good time working with maybelline in that way and mm -hmm. like i cherish it Forever. And it's funny because whenever I do interviews, things like that, people always bring up my Maybelline yeah. like thing because it was such a huge moment in like yeah. makeup history. Yeah. So it is for me, like, I'm just proud of it. Like I'm proud to be part of it. Um, and I would have never thought in a million years that I would be like one of the biggest brands in the world's like first male rep. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if they've had like male reps since. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like great. it was like a wave because like James Charles had his in 2016. Yes, in Cover Girl. And that was like a huge big deal. Everyone was confused because like, mm -hmm. you know, nobody's really seen this before. And then right. um, and that kind of like opened some doors. But then I do feel like there was a wave of it. And then mm -hmm. it kind of like has leveled out. Like, I don't know. I don't really see a lot of like men as the face or at least it wasn't as impactful as it was. I think, that's what then, it is. I think, so, I think now we're just seeing it more in different yeah. ways. So it's like you see uh, male models and stuff all the time in beauty campaigns nowadays, which is like so cool, but it's becoming more normalized, which is just nice. But at the time it was like, holy fuck, like this is insane. Like yeah. that was like when me and James were like cover girl Maybelline, it was like insane. Like, well, I like grew up that. in the country. I was confused. Right. Like, right exactly. Yeah. Like, I wasn't like against, I mean, clear. I watched like drag race and stuff before that, but it's just, it was just like interesting to see how like when I was younger I never thought that like gay marriage would ever be legal in my lifetime right, I was like right. not my lifetime It'll like and then happen. it was like a few years after that mm -hmm. I was like okay what and then now you see like these men who are you know all over billboards right painted up and it's mm -hmm. just like it's I it still like mind blows me how quickly we're starting to like a lot of people say that we're you know we're it's hard for us to progress as society, but at least in my lifetime, I've seen so much progression. Absolutely. Like, even when you're talking about, like, 10 years ago, the gay hate crimes and stuff, like, it was totally a thing. Yeah. And it's just not like that anymore. I mean, it's, I think it's but things for trans have shifted. People. Yeah, for, yeah trans for, trans people. for trans people. I yeah. feel like they've always had really horrible, horrible hate and crimes, you know, and now it's, like, progressed even more, I feel. We... So, like, you've worked with a ton of brands because you're just, like, a huge influencer. Like, you've done a lot of sponsorships and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, do you enjoy – do you still do a lot of those? Do you enjoy those? I do. I still do, like, sponsorships all the time, like, at least once a week. Like, in your uh, – do you do, like, times. YouTube videos or, like, Instagram mm -hmm. or TikTok or yeah, all that? Yeah, I do TikTok uh, integrations, YouTube integrations, Instagram integrations. Yeah. Well, like, for me, like, I think it's important, like, as an influencer to be, like, a, a multifaceted person, like, in different yeah. – areas of like platforms you know yeah. like for me like you know tiktok came up and i was like i should probably jump on that and i'm glad i did because you know when it was popping up during quarantine i was like fuck now everyone's like on tiktok you yeah. know so i'm glad i did when i did so i think it's really important like as an influencer to be multifaceted and put your like multiple baskets eggs and all of them mm -hmm. you know kind of vibes not just have like everything in one capacity because now i get brand opportunities on tiktok you know yeah. i actually have to post one today yeah so it's like that's cool to be able to diversify your portfolio in a yeah. way. So I do still do brand um, integrations and it's cool because I thought when I created my own line that I would stop getting those, but that's why I called it Lunar Beauty and not like mm -hmm. Manny MUA Cosmetics because it could have been even more attached to me yeah. and I would have lost out on like branded opportunities if I, I feel like if I didn't have, or if I named it Manny something. Yeah, that's you know? cool. Have you had like any like horror stories when it comes to working with a brand? Any like, oh like God, so situations many. like, lawsuits like contracts were broken, you know, things like that i have one are you in one right now immediately no 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 no, no. <laughs> i'm thinking about one immediately right now so i remember i did this collaboration we were going to do a, a brand partnership mm -hmm. it was me and this one company and there was like, this famous makeup artist was going to do my makeup because he was collaborating with the brand on like a product and they're like, okay, cool. We're okay. going to have him glam you for your channel. We're going to pay you for it. It's going to be a thing. We're going to be promoting his collaboration. And I was uh -huh. like, that's cool. Like, sounds great to me. So I went like on set, a full thing. He glams me the glam. I've never looked worse in my entire <laughs> life. It made his products look so terrible. It made everything like just look really, really bad. Like yeah. I looked like a catfish, mm -hmm. like an actual, like the fish, <laughs> like the not fish, like yeah. a, a catfish. Like I looked <laughs> a fish. Yeah. Um, cause I had like, he like drew out my mouth like a little longer. gave me like whiskers. It was oh. very strange. Um, and so I remember once that was done, I was like, yo, like 
this is really bad. Like I was like, I told him, I was like, I can't even upload this. Like this is like a joke, you know? And this was years ago. So I was like, this is a joke. Like it's, it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna look good for you guys. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna look good for the artist. It doesn't look good for me. Like all of it overall, I was like, I just think it's best if we don't upload it. Like I just think it's a, it looks bad. Yeah. Like, it looks really, really bad. Um, and so they were like, no, you're gonna upload it. And I was like, mm. no, I'm literally not gonna upload it. Like yeah. it's horrible. And they're like, we're gonna sue you. If and you don't upload it. They did? No. No, okay. I, told, I told my manager, so I told my manager, I was like, tell them to sue me. Yeah. I was like, I, I was like, tell them to sue me um, for that. It would, it would be 10 times worse for them yeah. to upload that video because I look horrible <laughs> and they're, and their <sighs> artists that they're using, like no one would take them seriously because it, mm -hmm. it looked so bad. Yeah. Like I, my makeup, my makeup has never looked worse. Even when <laughs> I was first starting makeup, it never looked worse than that. <laughs> I have a photo of it. Let me see. If I can How long ago was you. it? It was, it, was oh it, it was years You don't have to say ago. who it was, but was it one of those like Kardashian Jenner makeup artists? No. No, okay. I was it was say. not, it was not. Like, no, no, no. It was, it was a journey is what it was. Um, mm -hmm. But let me show you the makeup itself because I'm like, I'm, I don't think I've ever looked worse than this, truly. <laughs> I like how you have it like, wow. Like he used black eyeshadow to contour. Yeah, it looks really rough. Like, look at my little lashes. <laughs> he stacked five <laughs> pairs of lashes on me. Yeah, that's not cute. You're so much better at doing your... Your eyes kind of look like Chloe's there, like Chloe Kardashian. <laughs> Isn't that rough? Yeah, it's rough. So that's why I was like, you know, you guys, it's just not the vibe. <laughs> it's not my vibe. It's not my fantasy. So um, obviously I never worked with them again, and they didn't end up suing me because my manager was like, are you all serious? Like, this is going to blow up bad if you try Yeah. That. And so they did it. Cool. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I get, like, legal threats all the time, so um, I Do get you? it. Oh, all the time. I mean, because I'm talking because about things that people don't want out there. Right, right, right. A lot from, like, Bri uh, Britney's former management firm. No. Yeah, I've got like 20 from them. Like so many. And they, I just got one two weeks ago for a video. I was it just like a cease and desist? Yeah, just cease and okay, desist. Okay, okay. I mean, they threatened to sue me in every one of them, but they, that's why like, I get a ton of threats, but they don't actually do it because do they really want to go into discovery? That's so much money too. And I'm going to go knock on NBC, Fox, everyone's door, be like, hey, guess who's suing me? Let, exactly. Let's talk about it. So yes. you know, I'm not going to stay quiet. So I think anyone who tries to come after me, you know, it's not going to. It's not going to go well. well like, just in general, I think it's like just a terrible idea to even go into things like that because I'm like, dude, it's. It's not worth it. I mean, if someone's like lying and like fucking you over, then I get it. For because sure. like, there you go. But like for me, and I'm not like making things up. You're literally you know? like talking about what's happening. Yeah, what's like literally out there mm -hmm. in court documents and things like that. Exactly. So when it comes to creating your brand, you've got Lunar Beauty. Mm -hmm. Like how did that kind of like begin? Like I just, now that I've gone into this space, I've seen different like ways that people create companies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes like the Ace family, like Catherine McBroom had her right. skincare brand. Right. It was really just another brand and she just slapped her face on mm -hmm. it. Um, never part of the formula making or mm -hmm. anything like that. So like, and I don't think that's not, that's necessarily not the worst thing, you know? I mean, totally. I would much rather have someone who knows what they're doing take care of it than mm -hmm. like her be the boss. Absolutely. And, like, but when it comes to your <laughs> brand itself, I mean, I think you really understand makeup and how did you begin this company for me i was so for me it's all self-funded like my whole thing was like i wanted to be in control of my brand i wanted to be able, the reason i even wanted to create one is because i had such successful collaborations with other brands before yeah. i had done so many collaborations and they were all so fun to me and i felt like as like time had built and like as my collabs kept going and going and going mm -hmm. i was like i feel like i can do this too but instead of being a collaboration where i kind of have to play by the brand's rules in a way i was like if i can do my own thing like i don't have to play by anyone's rules i can make the packaging however i want it to be i can make the aesthetic whatever yeah. i want it to be um so that was why i kind of want to create one that was always a goal of mine was to create it um and so in 2018 I created it and I like, created my first product and I launched it and you know, it was called life's a drag. It was like my first yeah. product. And you know, the aesthetic of that is very different than the aesthetic that I have now for my brand. But mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of what a brand is. Like you grow yeah. and you learn and you do what you got to do and you want to like figure it out. But I remember like in the beginning I would just, I just met like different reps. I met different labs. I met different, uh, fulfillment centers, like mm -hmm. all these things. Like I would just go out and meet these people with like my parents because they're they work with the brand with me. Oh, okay. Um, and so I was just like, what the fuck do we do? And so what I would do, especially like at these like warehouses and like you know the labs, like I would kind of be looking around and see like what other brands that they do. Not like going and like snooping, but like if you're walking through a warehouse yeah. and you see boxes with names on it, I'm like, Shoot, I okay, love that. I feel like I can trust. Like if they're working on yeah these brands that are in Sephora and Ulta, like huge brands, like I can, mm -hmm. I can feel like that they know what they're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I started. You just kind of go out there and you just meet people and you Google and you read like, okay, makeup labs in Los Angeles and all that kind of stuff. And so that's kind of how it started for me. When it comes to like, just like 
when it comes to customization, I know you like work with these people under our boundaries and stuff, but are you able to really do a lot? Like, can you do like whatever you want to with packaging? In a collab? And, or do you mean in like Just like for own? your own brand. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I know that when you go too far, sometimes it can like, the cost is going to be too much and then like pack, you don't want to spend exactly. like, I guess most of the money is packaging, right? Um, it depends. So like, um, for example, if you make stuff in the US, like let's say you have your fill, which is the actual product itself. Filled in the United States, a lot of times the fill is going to be more expensive than your packaging. Yeah. But if you make it in other places, the fill will be less expensive than the packaging. Oh. So it just kind of depends on where you're making it. Where um, are you making yours? It depends. So sometimes I'm like mm. right now I'm working with labs. I'm trying to get samples from like this lab in Italy, uh, samples from this lab in Korea, and samples from labs in China, samples from labs Ooh. here. Literally like all over the place. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like if you find a lab that works with you and like they were like, willing to work with like the price point that you want it to be yeah. like it's cool yeah. and you know that they have like good practices and they send you like their briefs all that stuff there's a lot that goes into it oh, I'm it's kind of like black out thinking about it no, literally, like, like, I literally want imagine. to black out all the time um <laughs> but the, the part that's hard is the when you want to go so custom with stuff because mm -hmm. for me like I love the idea of doing that like I always want to create stuff that I haven't seen before and yeah. what like my mind wants to create like I want to do that but the problem is the cost of tooling mm -hmm. the tooling is basically when you create something but and it creates a machine that is your oh, machine. Oh, yeah, and the machine has to create that. So then, like, mm -hmm. that's so probably, the machine. wow. So it, ends, it could be, like, crazy money. It could be, like, as low as, like, let's say $5,000 to, like, forty to $60,000. For the machine to for create the, machine. the product. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's just the machine. Yeah. That's not including, like, the fill and the production. So yeah. it can get super pricey. So now I'm getting to the point in my brand where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be smart about it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get great components I can find and then design and customize parts of it to like fit my narrative, yeah. you know what I mean? Like to fit what I want it to be. Yeah, um, you've got a new collection that came out 12 days, yeah, I tw believe. Yeah, my advent, uh -huh, my 12 days of lunar <laughs> advent calendar. That's cute, so um, you were inspired by the holidays, obviously. Yes, 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 so I, I've never seen done an advent calendar where every day was an eyeshadow. Yeah. So that, to me, I was like, I was really excited about the idea of being able to do something that was innovative and something that was gonna be an experience. Like, I always love like an experience. Like, you're gonna open every single day, you get to rearrange the, the shades themselves, mm -hmm. however you want it to be. Like, I love the aspect of it. And for only 50 bucks, like, yeah. I mean, not like only, but like, for as much as that was to make, yeah. only 50 is like, oh. A, yeah, I could, a I could great charge more, yeah. you know, but I'm just, I'm very, because I am a consumer and yeah. I'm a YouTuber and I'm a beauty guru. Like I just, I can't like gouge people. Like yeah. I know what things are and I know what they cost to make and I know how expensive things can be. So I, of course, will charge more for th things like that, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to be the type of person that's just like, let's gouge to gouge. Cause you see that all the time. Yeah. You like see that like brands all the time, like come out and I show about it. That's like $80. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why are you doing that? Yeah, and it's important for your fans. Like, I feel like a lot of people, like, if you were to go and put out a crazy price product, you know, your fans are gonna like just feel disconnected from Absolutely. you, and no one's gonna be able to like <clears throat> go and afford that. Um, I saw you posted a TikTok recently where it seemed like it there was like a little I don't know if it's shade or like a little bothersome where you were talking about like promoting your mm -hmm. own brand and mm -hmm. stuff, and I I know that like you're joking about it and it's like lighthearted, but at the same time I do see like there is. A struggle to have like a brand and to be the face of it and to like promote this and sometimes your followers just may not be like as into that than you know what they're into other things so mm -hmm. like do you kind of feel a little bit of like a struggle there sometimes you know for me like I made it because it was a joke and I thought it was really funny and I was like oh my god <laughs> this is like because I noticed like for example when I promote my brand stuff on the IG stories more than not my views are lower uh -huh. you know just because it's like the nature of what yeah. I'm posting. Um, so like part of it is kind of like a joke, but funny and kind of true with like a little bit of truth to like yeah. every joke. Um, but I'm honestly so lucky and so blessed to have like the consumer that I have who like actually fuck with me and fuck with my brand so heavy. Yeah. And like, and I think that people that buy Lunar Beauty, like they know, like I really do give it my all and they respect that, you know? And so for me, it's like, yeah, it's a kind of funny and joke and like, but it's funny because all the comments are literally like, no, like we love seeing your stuff. Like, yeah. I'm a huge fan of your products. Like all my DMs were like, I hope this is a joke because like I literally love your stuff. And I'm like, no, I, it is 100% yeah. a joke. But it is funny how like it's hard to balance mm -hmm. everything because it's like, I feel like I wear all these hats, right? Like I yeah. wear my Manny MUA creator hat and then I wear my Lunar Beauty CEO hat and then I wear like the podcaster hat. Mm -hmm. And it's like all these things that it's just hard to manage sometimes yeah and you, know? you want all of them to be at 100 and mm -hmm. like you know you and it's can't, so hard yeah it's so hard to do that so 
Um, I want to shift gears a little bit because you're going to be on TV soon <laughs> with the reboot of The Surreal Life, yes. which is a show from the 2000s where um, they had a bunch of people <laughs> going to a house and they all like, kind of lived together. And there's drama. There's like, you know, all that good stuff. So <clears throat> is there anything you can really talk about when it comes to the show? Like, well, yeah, because it's out now. It's out. Not, what, all, not it all of it, but like there's been three episodes so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when did you guys film this? I, almost a year and a half ago. Oh, wow. So I filmed this so long Where was ago. it at? Did you film here in LA? In Mexico City. Mexico City? We filmed in Mexico City. Why? Yeah. And it was like, wow. Is it cheaper so to do even it get here or why? Yeah, it is for sure. It's definitely oh. cheaper to make it. I'm sure, I'm assuming in like the house that we had was like this insane mansion, which is probably easier mm. to get there and all these kind of things that like are involved. I'm not really exactly yeah. sure how it works, but they just said it was better to film there, but the altitude was so fucking high. Really? I was so winded the entire time. Oh, Cause no. it's like 10,000 You're over there like huffing up, and, and I'm like, the even mic. going up the stairs, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna yeah. die. But um, no, we, we filmed it almost a year and a half ago. There's been three episodes so far. It's every Monday uh -huh. on VH1. And it was definitely an experience. It yeah. was so hard. I'm sure living weeks. in this house with these, how long was it? Three weeks. Three weeks. Like living with these bitches for three fucking weeks. Yeah. Like me, Dennis Rodman, Tamar Braxton, CJ Perry, Kim Coles, Frankie Muniz, August Alsina, Stormy Daniels. Yeah. That's um, a big ass fucking crew. Yeah. And a and lot, a lot of, of really different people. That, and I think that's kind of the point of the show is to bring people from like such different walks of life together to see like what would happen. It's almost yeah. like a social experiment. Like the first one, because... Uh, Surreal Life back in the day was like the first mm -hmm. like living house reality show experience like that. So they're trying to bring it back. So did you have, I mean, you don't have to spoil it all, but did you have conflicts when you were there? I had like one little conflict. Yeah. But like for me, I I just came to realize that I, of the house, I was like the the gay bestie, the peacemaker. like funny, the peacemaker. Everyone would come to me when they needed advice. Yeah. Everyone would come to me. And I was always involved in everyone's shit. Uh -huh. But I was always, like, the person that was on the outside being, like, this is what's going on. Like, yeah. very, like, level-headed. Mm -hmm. um, so, I like, that was, like, the role I fit into. I wasn't the bitch that was, like, causing drama, causing all this stuff. I was one that was kind of, like, helping solve it Who and, like, figure bitch? it out. There was so many, you know, there's so many in it. You like, have to what watch about Stormy? Out. What do you think about Stormy? Oh, I love Stormy. Because I was going to say, I feel like she's, like, no, so random, but I, like, I should be her. my fave. Like I'm upset. Like, once, like... Cause she she ended up showing up late, so oh, she was really? a day late, and so everyone was kind of like apprehensive, like to get to know like our last house yeah. or whatever, because we had already been there for a day. Um, she came in and she came in with like the haunted doll, Susan. She uh -huh. came in with the haunted doll, and a lot of people were like not about that. Like Tamar and August specifically, they're very like, no, Hell we're no. not doing no Bride of Chucky bullshit, yeah. like haunted stuff. So. It was very hard for her in the beginning, and she definitely wanted to leave, like, first night there. She was like, I'm not going to stay. Aww. And so um, I'm glad I talked her out of it, and she ended up staying. Aww. But I ended up getting super, super close with her, and she's fucking amazing. And she has, like, this deep well of just, like, experience and knowledge, and she's so cool. Yeah. And no one, I feel like, would ever know that. You you just see the headlines of Stormy Daniels, yeah, and you of would her never and know. And all that. Yeah, exactly. And you would never know that she's actually, like, the coolest, most down-to-earth ass bitch. Yeah. She truly is. And, like, honestly, all the house saints I had, like, I had amazing experiences with all of them. Like, I would have never expected to, but I did. And just for people who don't know, Stormy Daniels is a controversial person who became famous because she claimed that she had hooked up with the president, which we all believe, and she described his private says like i believe a mushroom or something mm -hmm. was she your bestie there or like who was your like bestie my besties house? are probably frankie and kim mm -hmm. because they are my roommates so yeah. i had like to share the room with them too you share room with these oh bitches? i oh was not gosh. prepared like i've never had a share room with my, like i mean i mean i guess i did when i was like 10 mm -hmm. with my brother but like i never really had a share room as an adult like in my whole life so it was very interesting to have roommates essentially which i've never had yeah so that kim and frankie because they're also too sober they're sober as well so it was nice, like we called ourselves S3, like you're sober? sober three. I am. Mm -hmm. Like from drinking and Like stuff? from drinking. Then what are you doing when you're out at the clubs? You're just there? Living. And... Not drinking at all? No, I don't drink bit. at all. Like whenever you've seen me out, I'm not weed? drinking. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. You snort your no, just no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I, it's just for me, it's just, not, it's just not my vibe. Like I just like to But you've be been there, done that. So like. 100%. And I'm like, I'm very much like, I want to be in control of my surroundings, control of. Yeah. my space and like also being that I do I'm in the public eye in a way mm -hmm. I'm just like more conscious and aware of like things around me because you just yeah. never know yeah people can be like 
Ugh. very intense with me. Stressing me out. I know. Like, if I were to ever get to a level like you, I would be like, it, it, there's definitely, because people recognize you, like, right. I'm sure everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I still feel like I. It's freaky. Yeah. I will say. That's why I just get, I just get more, it's not even that it's freaky. Like, honestly, like, I appreciate it and I love when people come up to me and say hi and stuff like that. It's just more so like, I have to be aware. When you feel like you're being watched. That's I feel the like part. I'm being watched. Yeah. And I also feel like there's not everyone loves me. Like, yeah. not everyone likes me. So yeah. like, I am aware that there's people that could potentially want to harm me in the out there like I just I'm not stupid and so I feel like if I'm not if I'm not like inebriated I'm at least in control of like myself yeah in situations where I feel like I might not be in control so you did a collaboration in 2021 with the president um about vaccine hesitancy so I'm guessing you have all your vaccines and your boosters did you get a monkey pox one too You did? Sure oh did. Gosh. I have my little Stop. scar here to prove it. Oh, a scar. <laughs> no, like, it's just like, like if you see it, let me see, maybe pull it out. Like, it's not even that it's a scar. It's just like a little tiny, like, do you see like God. a little darkness yeah. there? That was it. I actually just got a, um IV the other day because I wasn't feeling great. Mm-hmm. And guess who I saw there? Jeff Wittick. He was like, right Oh my God, I just me. saw Jeff right now at the gym. Really? Yes, I said hi to him. He's yes. everywhere, huh? He's everywhere. Yeah. He's the sweetest. He really is the sweetest. Yeah. So how did you even like get approached with that? Like, did you get like a, an email from I the White House or yes, something? Yes, I <laughs> literally got an email from the White House. And mm. I was like, not the email being at White House. Like I was shook. Yeah. I was so spooked. And I remember like getting it and I sent it to my, my, my team as my manager and my PR. And I was like, you guys like, what the fuck is this? Like I need you guys to vet it for me to see if it was even real or what was going on. And they're yeah. like, no, like they want to do like this interview where it's like me and Jackie, I actually were the what two mm-hmm. that were in like the beauty vertical to do these like interviews, this interview with the president, talk about, you know, the vaccine and just like whatever we wanted to talk about. Essentially like we had like three questions to ask yeah. each. Um, and so it was, I don't think I've ever been so nervous for like an interviewee type thing in my whole life. Really? I was spooked. Spooky ookie. Did he um like seem like senile when you talked to him? No, not at all. Like he was so <laughs> like I and I thought that too. I was like, is he gonna be like does he know like I someone am? like what's going on? Every few seconds. Yeah, I was like, what is he gonna like... say? So but it was crazy because like I remember like because you have to like have the laptop open and like be on hold and like uh-huh. everything has to be like perfectly set up and to like it's like it's going because there's like a lot of setup for it. You know, uh, it wasn't like was a small it live thing. or something or it wasn't that it was live, but like it was like being recorded on their end and my yeah. end and streaming at the same time. And there was uh, so many things happening that it was like they would text me and be like, "Okay, president's walking." Like da da da, and I was like, "No, uh, you're like, like I was like, like, the like president's up. walking. What do you mean?" Yeah. Um. So it was like things like that where I was like freaked the fuck out. And so I had the three questions that you obviously you ask you send in your questions beforehand, and they're like these are the three like you can ask, and these are the only things that you guys are gonna be able to talk about. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. Like yeah. I'm down with that. And so I remember I added like a fun question in there because I didn't want it to be so like stale. In yeah, a way. I was like, I can't like it, let it be just like, so why is getting a vaccine important? Like, no, that wasn't what I was wanting to do. So I, I remember asking him, I was like, what could, he, what product would you bring on like a private island, like on a, a desert island if he was like stranded? Did you get some backlash for doing so much. that? You did. I mean, so I'm sure. Much. I like the the YouTube videos on the White House. Like, they get the most dislikes out of like everything. Everything. Hundred percent. I got so like, was it much worth backlash. it in your opinion to yeah. do it? Just like, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Because like, I guess it for me is more so about like collab. With if the it's president. something that like yeah, that's cool as fuck. But like it was more about the message that I had believed in. And I was yeah. like, well, I feel like you know if we can make the world better and people get vaccinated and make things more normal again and you know help people out. Like there's so many people obviously that were passing away from COVID at the time. Yeah. And I was like, if we can help people that need the help more and by the herd immunity thing, yeah. then let's do it. You know. So for me, it was like a cause I did believe in. Yeah. Um, and it was also just a flex to be able to be like I literally did a video with the president yeah like what the fuck like it was so crazy but i did get the most immense amount of backlash like and i like like out of people like of your like own like fan base or just people who like randoms now just saw just you it. yeah, yeah. Just it was random like, why would you do this mm-hmm. and honestly i'm sure like some of my own fans did too for sure like definitely people that are not like you know pro vaccine or not you know pro biden things like that so i was like totally get it like everyone has like their own opinion about whatever they want to have an opinion on but for me it was like i felt like my platform was so much more than like a smoky eye, mm-hmm. you know, in a yeah. way where I was like, well, if I can help and, you know, do something that I believed in, like, why not? Do you see yourself getting like into more politically related like no. campaigns or anything? Running not really. for some like office <laughs> in a couple I mean, years? Yes, absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go the Caitlyn Jenner out. Oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I just, you saw those nasty tweets Bitch, yes, from about Dylan. And I was sitting right next I to our dialogue sp- the other no. day. Yes, literally. I was sp- Ooh. I was like right next to Dylan. I was like, oh, like I'm you sorry for what Caitlyn. No, like, literally, no. It was like insane to me, but I'm totally fucking around. I'm not going the Caitlyn Jenner route. Absolutely yeah. Not. Um, but not. I don't. Def- I definitely don't see myself getting into like 
a political thing. It's just like not my vibe. But if I can help in some way with certain things that I feel like do like, you know, mesh with me, like I would, I'm so down, you know, especially the things that I like feel important about, like, you know, like talking against certain things like, you know, like the don't say gay bill in Florida, things Mm -hmm. like that. Like I spoke up about that. Yeah. Obviously because it's something that affects my, my community, Mm -hmm. you know? So things I feel really like strongly about, I will definitely speak out about because I'm not scared to do it, Mm -hmm. but it's not something like I know a ton about either. Like I don't like to ever talk about something that I don't feel like I know a ton about. Same. I totally agree. When people ask me to speak on like certain political things, like, like, you know, when there's like these waves of different things, it's like, I just don't know exactly like, you know, I'm not the, like I'm not the best one to give you guys like my statement or my thoughts. Yeah. Like I'm literally no. I know what I'm good at and I'm going to do what I'm good at and then we go from there. Yes. So, YouTube is clearly something you're good at because you have like 4 million subscribers, <laughs> 500 million uh-huh. views. So like, how did you like even get started like posting on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Um, I believe you were like, what, like t- uh, 23? 14. Oh, when, when you first when posted started. your... 2014 is how many years ago? Or maybe Eight? 23 when you posted... Oh, 23 for sure. Uh, 23. Everyday Foundation Routine. Maybe yeah. Anyway. What prompted you to... St- to film that my Instagram so I actually yeah. so like I had Instagram first I had like maybe like 50,000 followers at the time and people on Instagram were like how do you do the looks that you do on your pictures because remember like Instagram back then was just photos like, yeah, yeah, little, yeah that's all it was and so a lot of people were just like oh how do you do it and I was like I don't know how to explain like on a picture like how what I'm doing mm-hmm. like a pictorial um so they're like you should start a YouTube channel because it was more st- it was like going but it was still like pretty fresh yeah in the YouTube world and I was like I guess but I don't really have anything like I didn't know what to do I was like, I, my mom has a camera I can always borrow, and I'll buy Amazon, like, like these lights from Amazon, like, yeah, the yeah. cheap version. Um, and I did that, so I started, like, the channel, just because people were like, yo, like, mm-hmm. what do you do for this X, Y, and Z? And I was like, oh, I can, like, just show you guys how to do it really quickly, what I do. And that's kind of why it started, because I had Instagram first. Mm-hmm, yeah. And people were just kind of like, you should make And it YouTube prompted channel. you to do that. Mm-hmm. So then um, you started posting more consistently. Were your parents aware that you were posting on? This like, is this still like content? we're still in the absolute don't yeah. tell. Like don't I wasn't like tell. they didn't know I was doing it on YouTube yet. Yeah. Um, it was still in that like frame of mind where it's like no one's like it's still a secret to me. Like it was still like my again, it was almost like I feel like I always say this, but it's like YouTube feeling like my diary in a way where yeah. it's like I get to like express myself in a way that I feel like I couldn't in real life because again like in real life like i grew up mormon i you know i'm latino like there was a lot of like pressure on me jesus there we go (laughs) that's a lot yeah yeah so like i'm saying like it was just so much like i was like like so many things stacked against me that in like in like a way where i felt like this weird immense pressure on Mm -hmm. myself that i was like well youtube is in a way is like where i can go to be like myself Mm -hmm. and like people get to see it for like who i am and you know, experience me in a way that people don't get to in my real life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was so adamant about wanting to start one. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I'm going to continue it and see how it goes. And it's like my own little secret. And your career on YouTube is super impressive. I mean, you've entertained millions of people hours and hours on end. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that you can't like a lot of people, you know, they struggle with loneliness or whatever they're dealing with. And like, sometimes your outlet like provides them comfort Mm -hmm. and entertainment. And that's something that I think is so like important that other people may sometimes undermine how, you know, giving these people this content really is like supporting people in different ways. And you've been Mm -hmm. so successful. It's led to other opportunities on YouTube, like the show you did um, with Joey Graceffa, The Escape Escape the the Night, night. which I remember watching that like back when it was like a thing back then. Yes. You watched it? 16, yeah. The one that I was in? Yeah, I I watched um, all of them back then. Like I was a a, a huge consumer of YouTube. Yeah. The reason why I started watching YouTube is because Trisha Paytas. I'm Mm. obsessed with Trisha Paytas Uh uh since I was like 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of grew from there. Like I learned who Shane was through her and like all those different people. And I was such a consumer. I created my channel like December 2019. So it's still like relatively like new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I was like consuming all of that back then. I love it. How did you like filming that show? It was so much fun. Like I had the most amazing time. I didn't realize like the like commitment it was because it was like night shoots. And I've never done that before. Where it's like you start filming at like 8 p.m. And you don't wrap to like 4 a.m. Oh, no. 5 a.m. So I was like, what the why Fuck. is that to save money on the, like the set, or is no, it because, it's because of the darkness like, or something? Dark. Oh, it's like for, yeah. because we're outside, so yeah. it's like it can't be like daylight. Yeah. Like it's like you're escaping the night, so it needs to be nighttime the entire time. Wow. So it was like the thing where it's like if you get let's say killed off or whatever, you don't come back the next day. So it's like for me, I made it to like basically the finale. I was like the 
last one to make it ish. Mm -hmm. um, so I made it like the entire time, all five nights. Like I yeah. was filming it the entire time. So I was like, by the end of it, I was on fumes. Yeah. Like I was going through the gigs, but it was so much fun. And like, I'd never been on a set like that. I never really worked in an experience like that where I was able to like be like, what is it called? Like when you're a talent, like a talent yeah. on set. Like I've never done that before. You're like an actor. An actor. Yeah. Way. yeah. And it's like funny cause it's like, part scripted but but like us like we're not scripted at all like mm -hmm. we can say whatever we want to say but like the show has a cadence to it like it mm -hmm. flows like an outline yes like they have an outline for it but like us we're just put in situations like you just go yeah but it's so it's like semi-scripted i don't know how that kind really of reality-ish yeah reality-ish exactly like so, competition-ish yeah mm -hmm. and you're kind of like playing into the roles like i was like i was like the record producer and then, like <laughs> yeah. very like yeah i have clients back home like that vibe <laughs> but um it was really really fun it was so hard but, you know, Joey and Daniel, like, they made it the most amazing experience for me. Did you get, like, paid for it or was, like, a favorite yeah, thing? Yeah, it, yeah. I got paid for it, but it wasn't, like... Yeah, something, like, crazy. It's literally, like, the minimal... It was also to, paid. like... It's for I fun. Mean, yeah. Like, and, and, like, Daniel and Joey are, like, such my good friends and they asked me to be part of it. And I was, like, dude, yes. Like, I'm yeah. so here for you. I was, like, I could, be, I would have done it for free. Like, I wouldn't have given a fuck. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, a fun thing to do to be, like, I was in Escape the Night. Like, that's cunt to be able to yeah. see. Especially then... When it's it so like, iconic it's back iconic. when YouTube was such a good era then. Like, yes, when it was good. It was fire. And it was like, I was able to be obviously one of the castmates. And like during VidCon, like it was like, they had like this crazy amount of people. Like we yeah. went into our like Escape the Night, like PR. Well, like YouTube thing. was like funding it and stuff at some point, exactly. right? No, yeah, it was a yeah. YouTube premium. It was like yeah. a YouTube retro. So it was. Uh, do you pay for premium? That was amazing. Of course I do. Yeah, I know. I feel like we like, have to. We <laughs> should get it for free. I don't want. I agree. But I don't want to like really watch commercials. No, never. Never, I, right? Never. I was like, I can't. I don't even like think I don't associate commercials with YouTube anymore because of premium. Like I don't. I even, mean, I do on like on our full coverage channel because we don't have premium on there. We just yeah. have it like on our personals. Yeah. And then I remember I'll click something and like commercial plays. And I'm like, like oh, oh, switch account. There's a commercial. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Like, I always forget that they're. This is how we get paid. So Joey <laughs> seems like a great guy. Um, super nice. Amazing. When it like, Gabby like made this whole thing where she like just like trashed him and stuff. Do you like know her? I mean, I'm sure you've I met do. her because like at this point. Did you like not, you didn't have the same experience that she did? No, right? I had like the polar opposite experience of what <laughs> she had apparently. Um, but I, I mean, at the end of the day, like everyone has their experiences. Yeah. Was that what actually happened? Who knows? Like that's what her perception was of the situation. I had the most amazing experience. I had an amazing, amazing time. And being that I'm friends with Joey and Daniel, like I know so much more behind the scenes stuff of like went down, what happened, all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, it sucks. Like the situation was shitty, but for me, like I'm not, I've had great interactions with Gabby yeah. Hanna, you know, I'm not going to be sitting here and be like, she's the worst ever. Like you can't really not. pick sides. You like, can't, you really can't. Like things. I had amazing experiences with her. Like I truly, truly did. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and like, just like bash her, but I'm of course going to defend like my close friends, Joey and Daniel. Yeah. Like I'm going to defend them in situations with, like, I remember, I think I said something too. Like I tweeted about saying how amazing the experience was. Mm -hmm. doing escape the night because like i didn't want people to think that they're running this like hodgepodge production like it was a fucking crazy ass production yeah. so many moving parts and so i'm gonna defend that you know what i mean i'm not gonna i don't need to bash gabby but i'm gonna defend yeah him. and there's certain things i don't know i feel like as like an adult like there's certain things where you like cross the line there's no fixing that like in my mm -hmm. if i was joey like gabby had crossed the line and there was just like so much like the series and everything like it was something i didn't even really watch because it was just not even entertaining to me right um but just like kind of put a bad taste in my mouth to be honest i just had to say that which one just her her like how she did this whole like series shit oh where she yeah, was, like, yeah 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 like part the expose of, uh, it's just like so like just bad taste right, right, and right. not really done well and just like so defensive. Like, when someone has to be that defensive, there's something like, you know, maybe you should, like, hear, the, you know, out the other side. Because I feel like there's some things that she did that was, like, a little bit, like, as a creator, I can't imagine doing that to another creator. Right. Like, publicly and stuff. Right. And there's a lot of drama, obviously, on the internet. You and Laura Lee have this podcast called Full Coverage. Mm -hmm. And there's a part where it says all the juiciest gossip about... All of the fools in the world, we've got those fools covered. We've mm -hmm. been canceled. We've been canceled fools ourselves. Nothing's going to stop us from living our best lives, which I think is 100% true. Yeah, um, 100%. And, like, I don't know why. I guess, like, in my perspective, like, I've watched your content. I haven't, like, been, like, obsessed. So I, like, didn't really, like, I'm realize like, you were canceled. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, like, I, like, have now since, like, seen some of the videos and mm -hmm. things like that. And, like, there was the whole drama getting and all totally, this totally. drama, which I remember, like, consuming it back then and being, like, shook when certain videos dropped. But then at right. some, some points I'm a little bit, like, I think when it came to, like, 
Gabriel, you like I was a little bit more paying attention to like the Jeffrey, like that side of it. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what happened there, but you describe yourself as being canceled. Do you feel like you were canceled when you made that video? I do. I feel like at the time, I definitely felt like I feel like Drama Again One was like a catalyst for like all the Drama Again mm-hmm. stuff. Like I feel like at the time in the beauty world, like nothing as that big had happened. Like mm-hmm. it was like the biggest drama in the beauty like world history at the yeah. time during drama getting it know? was huge i mean i think it was, it was something that where youtube didn't even know what to do with it they, like, they, they didn't, didn't like, want to like promote it they didn't no, want to like be defined by it but everyone was talking everyone about, was talking about it. it was huge and then of course like drama getting two and three happened and like yeah. those got even bigger so it's just like we were, were like involved in all three? the first no God, okay no. you're just i was only number one <laughs> okay the original yeah i'm the original <laughs> yeah no but it was truly like I felt at the time, I did feel like I was definitely canceled with a lot of people. Like, I mean, I lost like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of followers. I was going to ask, did you like, lo- oh, so followers, how about brand deals? Oh, uh, yeah, all of that. Lost brand really? deals, lost hundreds of thousands of followers, lost like just so much. And I ended up taking like a two-month break off of like social media. Did you like, how do you, because when you like lose all of that so quickly, like how do you even mentally like, did you just feel like your life was over I in that therapy. moment? therapy. Yeah, you went to therapy. Hundred percent. Yeah, I went yeah. to therapy. Like I'm a big times, believer. Like once a I, I week gone, or I've gone, like, yeah, once a week. Like I, two, and three I, times I, a week. <laughs> four times a week. Yeah, if I was like day. going through something like that, I mean, I would be like, <laughs> it might be on call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I have gone to therapy like when I was younger and you know in mm-hmm. high school and stuff like that, and I always felt like it was like a good thing for me, like just to kind of reset mentally. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I did it for six months, um, where I was just like, I wanted to kind of like refocus and recenter what I mm-hmm. really thought was important because I thought like when you go through something like that, you think that that's like your world, right? It's like in a way like you you've built this like you've built this career for yourself and you see it all cr- like crumbling and tumbling yeah. down you're like holy fucking shit like years and years and years and years of work like going to shit and you feel like it's all gonna go away because mind you at the end like this was the first one so like yeah. I literally was like I'm done like I'm never gonna be able to work yeah. again I'm never gonna be able to do anything again um that's so why I'm never gonna be able to come back to YouTube um so I was just like freaked the fuck out because I didn't know what to do so I think for me it was really important to kind of like refocus and recenter what I found important. And it w- and I noticed that it wasn't like views and likes mm. and comments and subs. Like that wasn't like the most important thing to me. It was, a um, it was like my family. Yeah, It was oh, like okay. the people in my life that was most important for me. And people that I wasn't like paying attention to as much because of being Manny MUA. Mm. You know, in a way, like when you're a, like a social media influencer, right? And you're like grinding, like you're like yeah. in the grind. I noticed that too. It goes like weeks and I haven't talked to my best friends. Exactly. And it's like, I'm just like because filming so much and doing so yes. many other things. That- so it's like hard because I understand the grind and like I did that to get to where I am now. Yeah. But like, it's not the same for me now. Like I don't do that. Like I live my life and Good, I like work social life media. Balance. Yes. Yeah. Whereas before like, I did it, like I was literally like, I need to be the, one of the biggest influencers in the entire world, in the beauty world, and da da da, and like I was, like, and I was like this huge creator, you know, at the time. Um, but it was just like I feel like I was like drowning in my yeah. own shit. And then once like that happened, you fall down, you stumble. You're like, wait, do I want to go back to that, or do I want to like recenter and like refocus? Do you think like create? I think during Drama Again One, like cancel, uh, cancel culture was a little bit different than it was a little bit newer. Mm-hmm. When you think about creator like cancellation nowadays, like. Do you kind of like believe in it or do you have any like advice for someone who does find themselves in that position? Like, I mean, what you did, it sounded like you stepped away for some time. You kind of reset your mm-hmm. um, your values. So what would you recommend for someone who's now finding themselves in like some trauma? I would recommend the same thing. Like yeah. I really would. Like I feel like for me, um, it's hard, right? Like social media just in general is so hard. It's so easy to feel like you're drowning in it and you feel like, especially when you're getting canceled, like the whole world is tumbling down on you. Like it's so hard not to feel that. So when you have other things going for you in your life, like for example, like if that's your only thing going on and that's crumbling, like it feels like your whole world's over. Yeah. So when you focus on other things in your Mm -hmm. life and you focus like, I have amazing friends, I have an amazing family, I have all these things that's like, yeah, it's hard. It's fucking sucks. But when you're able to focus on other things, Mm -hmm. it, they help carry like the burden on you like yeah. that you that you're having and so i think that for me that was really important it's like you know what you have to own your shit like if you fucked up like own your shit like admit it you're like you know what like this is it like this happened and like i'm just going to do better and move forward and i think there's something that's really really important about you know walking the walk and not just like talking the talk and being like i'm sorry but then like a month later doing the same shit like that's not yeah. like to me that's not change so for me it's like you if you're going to say sorry about something and you're going to say you're going to fix it like do it yeah. You know, but like also take a break and like notice like what is important to you and what you want to focus on and how you want to recenter in a way. Because it's honestly at the end of the day, like let me tell you, true tea, true tea, true tea. You're not going to get canceled if you're not relevant. 
Mm-hmm. Like, true tea. People like, tell me all the time, like, all they're like, oh my God, I'm so scared of getting canceled. It's crazy. I'm like, you're not going to get canceled. Because, like, no, not trying to sound harsh, but, like, you have to be, like, at the top, top, top of your game in your industry to even get to the point where you can be canceled. Yeah. Like, people have to care enough to cancel you. Yeah. Like, if you're not, like, if you're just, like, coasting by, chilling, people, like, don't really care. Mm-hmm. Like, enough to do that. Yeah. You know? So, you have to be at a certain spot, like, at the height of your game to be able to even get canceled. Yeah, to have the honor. To have the honor of it. It's just such an honor. So, I think you just took a trip with Gabriel. Mm-hmm. Um, to Montana. Yeah. So you guys have are really close friends. Yes. I see you guys post all the time. Um, like, there was obviously some drama between you guys at some mm-hmm. point in the past. He made a video talking about you and mm-hmm. things. Um, I don't know how. I don't even know how long ago that was. Like, was it like, like five years ago? Almost like, five years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you guys are friends now. Um, how do you like forgive someone, or how do you even trust someone? Because I think for me, like as a creator, like. I'm scared to like have a friendship one day where they do take it public and they trash me and they, mm-hmm. you know, do that shit. I mean, I don't know if I could ever trust them again. Yeah. Like as someone, for someone like me, if I like were to go through this, like what would you give advice to for like, I guess, reopening that? I guess mm-hmm. partial is like him, like it, like, you know, reassuring you as a friend. But like, I guess from me, when I saw some of that, I was like, oh, I can't believe that you guys are such good friends after yeah. going through that. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you like describe that friendship? Yeah. So for me and Gabriel, we actually ended up rekindling like a year later. Okay. So it happened in 2018. We didn't even start talking until 2019. Mm-hmm. And I remember I texted him and I was like, hey, just want to let you know, like, I've been thinking about you recently, especially because it was like kind of like our like anniversary, like one yeah. year. I was like, fuck, I've been thinking about Gabriel a lot. <laughs> and the thing is like he's not a bad person. Like Mm -hmm. I knew that like in my soul, like, yeah, like shit has happened and things have transpired, but he's not a bad person. And like, I knew he cared about me, but we weren't that close. And I know it sounds like strange because we had like a friend group. It was like me, Laura, Gabriel, and Nikita. And like, we had this little group, but like we were closer online than what it was in the reality. Like me and Gabriel specifically. Like we weren't as close like we're like we're now like we're way closer than we were like you don't feel like you ever do anything like never this, like ever, literally yeah. never because like now we like communicate a lot more like we talk more yeah um and like we're like really close like we're like judy's but <laughs> back then it was like we were in a friend group and like it was cute and it was fun but we weren't that close yeah like we were friends we weren't like besties yeah so um i think that now it's like we just have both learned so much you know communication skills and you know, talking to each other about things and talking about what transpired and all this behind the scenes stuff that like we talked like when we finally met up in person, I'm sorry. Uh Um, And we met in person, I was like, girl, like what's going on? And so we like had like this deep kiki for like hours and we're like, okay, so this is the, the, this is what's going on. Uh This is what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, got it, got it, got it. And so we have been like, we've gotten closer ever since then. Cause we do, we do so the stuff second, like the second wave of your friendship was almost completely different than it's, I feel like our friendship now is completely different than the first time. Yeah. Like I really do. Like, I feel like me and him, like we'll just text one on one. Yeah. Whereas like before, like we had like a group text, Yeah, it was you like know what a, I mean? Like it just mm-hmm. wasn't the same. Like it was a, a group setting and now it's like, he's my friend. Like he's mine, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it's nice because like, even the, I'll be like, Hey girl, like what do you want? Want to go to the movies real quick? Yeah. Like, like he's like that, your good friend to go and hang and just do chill. Me and him with. only. Like, yeah. and that wasn't us before. Yeah. So now it's like it's just evolved so much more um, to like a real like genuine friendship where it's like we're genuinely friends and we include online. Whereas it was, it was like I feel like kind of opposite before where it's like mm-hmm. we were friends but we seemed closer online. I'm like looking for like, are you like? ever gonna date someone like, are you like <laughs> you're like looking for are you any one of those man? people who are like just like single forever like right you've accepted it i i like what is going on with your dating history because it seems like it's so under the radar like have you ever had a public boyfriend like, i've never had a public boyfriend before have you had a boyfriend no never never i've never had like a like a boyfriend that i've had for like like I've more dated than like guys. six months exactly more than two months six months more than six months i've never dated someone wow. more longer than six months so like for me it's like so difficult because when I was, like, comfortable with being gay, yeah. it was, like, my early 20s. Uh-huh. Like, even, like, oh, like, yeah, I'm gay, and, like, I don't want to experience it. I was, like, I was like mm. 22, 23. Then I, like, found social media. And that's, like, all I focused on for yeah. years and years and years and years was, like, grinding so hard and was, like, I'm going to be Manny Amelia. I'm going to be so fucking cool and be, like, the biggest creator, you know? And so I didn't, like, focus on dating as much during that time. Um, and like, I had been burned so much in my young, young twenties from like guys I did like a lot in like college yeah. and stuff. And so I was like, Oh my God, like fuck boys. I'm going to like kill it in my work. And I did, yeah. you know, and I did, I focused on that. And so now like I'm at a point in my life where it's like, again, like kind of refocusing, re-energizing, yeah. where you kind of want to do stuff myself and, you know, putting myself out there in a way. Cause I'll, I'll be in like ebbs and flows. Like yeah. I'll like date. So I'll date for like, I'll go on like 
a date a week for like two months straight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, boom, 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 like getting it under. Um, and then there'll be like, if it doesn't work out, I'm just like, okay, I'm not gonna date for four months. And like, I'll just stop and I'll just like fuck around. When's the last date you've been on? Recently, so like, mm. I've been talking to someone. I've been, yeah. I have been seeing someone okay. recently. Um, he's out of town currently, but we, we've, we've been like dating for like almost like a month and a half. And what are these guys like? Are they like kind of like normal, like nine to fivers? Like more normal. Yeah. But the thing is, that's also really tough. Is finding, oh my god, it's like dating is the worst for me. Um, finding someone who is cool with what I do, as like a creator in the public eye. Mm -hmm. That's already like a strike yeah. in a way uh, that I wear makeup for like a living mm -hmm. and you're like because gay men can be so like that's not masculine like be very yeah. that vibes like and it's annoying and so like people can be like kind of strange or I mean, weirded out by that and, are you saying you're a top no just well, <laughs> yeah. you're a thin top <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I'm a blouse <laughs> yeah. um, so like that's like a thing too where it's like there's like this weird toxic masculinity in the gay world itself like oh, that's 100%, a huge thing especially here and, it oh, was birthed LA, here literally literally <laughs> so it's like there's that and then there's like the aspect of me being, you know, in the public eye yeah. in a way. So it's like people have to be com oh, and successful. Mm -hmm. Like they have to be comfortable with the fact that I can take care of myself. Yeah. A lot of men want to do well for themselves and they feel like if you are doing like so well, that's almost like some personal thing It's not thing enough to for them. them. Yeah. Yes. So there's like these like, w these like weird walls yeah. that I have to like get to, to like pass through. And then like, not only all those things have to like work. So like the guy has to like be able to be cool with all those things, I have to be attracted to him too. Yeah. Like what? It's mm -hmm. so hard to like get to a spot where like all that like fits together. Yeah. So for me, like it's just more so like, okay, well I just need to keep dating until like I find that. Luckily I'm like seeing someone right now, which has been great. Uh -huh. um, have you had anyone cool. like try to like threaten you in some way or something? Like some messy breakup or like some crazy guy you saw for like a month and then oh you break up and they're like, I want to talk about you on the internet or mm -hmm. anything like that. Never. And the thing is I always, I never talk about what I do in the beginning. Yeah. Never. I mean, what did they usually know though? Like how do they a meet you? A lot of times, like they'll meet me like let's say on Hinge, like let's say yeah, like, yeah. on a dating app or something. Do you not something. have anything on your Hinge profile? It's that, all like, just photos show. of me without glam and I don't have it attached to my Instagram You don't either. have like, yeah, like your And I have a second Instagram for like chill vibes. Oh, okay. Like, chill just, vibes like, me. Do, have people found it? Like, do, Yeah, no, I mean, like, yeah, like, I've totally follow? talked about it before, um, but it's just more like, the non man way. Yeah, not me. like branded content's not going on there. Exactly. It's like not that. like videos of me glam or like, you know, things like that. Like, it's just not that. I'm more yeah. like just chill, like my everyday me. Yeah. Is that, that's my Instagram. So I'll give him that instead. Um, but in a way, it's like so weird because I feel like sometimes I'm like, am I being like decept deceitful? Like, yeah. not telling them what I really do. Because I always say, I was like, oh, I work in like social media marketing. Like, mm -hmm. I always say things like that. Yeah. Instead of saying I do, um, you know, I'm a beauty guru. But I think it's like something that like, it's like me, like I'm gonna know when I wanna disclose that, like if I feel comfortable enough to talk about that because it's like letting someone in on like a huge part of my life. Does it, have you gone on like multiple dates before you tell them? Or yeah. Like you tell them, oh really? Multiple, yeah. It just seems like, I just feel like there's like, these guys aren't doing their due diligence. Like, well luckily look like, you because up. I'm so like ch chill on the, pla on the other things, like very like not makeup me and like my audience is literally 90% women. Yeah. Like chances are gonna be slimmer that a guy that I'm talking to is gonna know me mm. unless he's like, knows about makeup yeah. in the beauty world. Yeah. So it's like, I luckily, because I am in like that niche. I'm mm -hmm. not like a, like, let's say like a, you know, like those gay creators that are just like hot. Yeah. Like they're all the gays follow them. Yeah. Like, I'm not that. So like, I'm just like, I totally girl. get that. I'm like 80% women follow me. So exactly. 90%. <laughs> like I was saying like 91% women follow me. So yeah. it's like hard to, um, clock me. I feel yeah. Like it's harder to clock me. Uh, it's so, it just triggered me because like my boyfriend's always like, you get so many messages on Instagram, but I'm like, it's all women. Like, oh, it's uh, all ladies. Like, it's literally all women. Worried. And like, and I will get like time to time, like the dick pic and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. for sure. Or like an asshole pic. And I'm oh like, God. work diva. But it's yeah. just like, um, it's, it's very fascinating to like even date. So I think for me, like I'm just gonna, if it happens, it happens and I'm gonna continue on like doing my thing. But if not, then like, I'm cool. Like I'm so self-sufficient mm -hmm. and like, I'm genuinely like a happy person. Like I don't no, need someone uh, to be happy, you, but you, sh you deserve someone. You definitely no, I do. I, and I know, and I recognize that too. Like I know like I would like that, yeah. but I'm not like that person where I'm like, Oh my God, like crying. Cause I don't have a man. Yeah. Like I'm not that person. We need like good manifestation for it. Like exactly. Yeah, good someone who's just going to like, 
it's gonna flow add to your life and absolutely only so like for ways. me i'm just like oh like i'm used to it like i've been like single my whole life yeah like, it's not something that i'm like oh no like what was me like i don't care <laughs> oh my god that's so me though i'm like definitely you're that like person. i can't believe i'm single right yeah, now yeah yeah i can't well <laughs> thank you so much for coming on i did oh, want to quickly ask like are your parents like cool with you now with your absolutely and oh we're like i mean they like run, like work with you in your business biggest, right like advocates yeah i think it just took time and like yeah i always say with like even people going through similar things like with you know, coming out to their parents if they're like religious and stuff like that. I think it's like very important that like it takes like two to tango, right? Yeah. Where it's like you need to meet them halfway and they need to meet like you halfway. Like it needs to be on both sides to try to create that connection. Mm -hmm. And luckily I always had that with my, my parents, even though they didn't get it and they thought being gay was a choice and they never had gay friends and they yeah. didn't know any of that stuff. You just have to like, teach them and show them and like be like yo I'm like the, still the same me when you were talking about like showing them the messages from like 11 year old boys I mm -hmm. think that's really like powerful and it's like a way that you're not forcing them to agree, like to agree with your mentality exactly. or your you know choices or whatever mm -hmm. um you're showing them like what the result of and like how exactly. it's a good thing and I think that's like super powerful so yeah so then and they thought the same thing they were like holy fucking shit like yeah I can't believe this is like what you're doing and like yeah. that you're actually making a difference and I'm like see oh so. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you for on. Me. I'm fun. so grateful that you came on. <laughs> go and check out Manny. I'm going to list everything below and go shop his makeup. I believe like oh God, so it, it's on sale right now, right? The 12 days. Like, yes. It, yes. It yeah. Is. Yeah. This should hopefully. be like out like I'll soon. Hopefully I've like filmed podcasts back in like May that are like, you know, I'm going to post, but this one it's coming out soon. So Period. go and check it out. Check out Manny. And thank you so much. Thank you for having I'll me. see you guys in our next episode. Bye, Bye guys. I'm <laughs> sorry.